it's never easy moving to a different country. There are a lot of adjustments that you need to make. So if you're moving to the USA before you hop onto that plane, plan for these top five struggles that you will face when you move to another country. Hi, my name is Mighty and welcome to Clueless in the US. And my goal in this channel is to help you move, survive, and thrive in the USA. So before we start, I have a quick question. If you are moving to the USA, what do you anticipate will be your biggest challenge? Or if you've been in the US for a couple or a few years now, what has been your biggest struggle? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Number one, homesickness. You will be far away from friends and family who love you and support you. And that is a difficult experience. In my case, I am used to being away from my family because I, I've been traveling a lot since I was in college. And I spent a lot of time away from my parents and my siblings when I was in college. However, for my wife, it's a different story because she enjoys a close relationship, really close-knit relationship with her siblings and her her parents. Um, her parents are deceased now, but she still enjoys a very close relationship with her sisters and brothers. But, you know, I, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy a close relationship with my siblings and my parents. I do. But it's just that she has never been too far away from her family until we moved to the USA. So it's been quite a struggle for her in the first few years of staying here in the USA. Number two, and this is something that's related to homesickness, this feeling of isolation. So since you're far away from your family and friends and far away from your community, you miss family events, you miss reunions. Like again, in the case of my wife, every new year, we gather together at her parents' home with five of her siblings and their own family. So it's a riot. So if you are used to that kind of family gathering, guess what? you will not enjoy that same level of closeness and relationship when you move to another country. Um, there will also be some luck, lack of support for your child or children, lack of financial support because in the Philippines, and this has happened to me, for me and for my wife, if we needed some extra support because of family emergencies, we could ask for some help from you know, a brother, a sister, and say, hey, we need some help with some bills that came due, hospital bills, or what have you. But here, there's no such thing. So it's a little bit more difficult. Um, one other thing that we struggled a bit with was that since 2015, when we moved here, we added two new members to our family. So one in 2018 and another one in 2020. But we are thankful that we found uh, friends and neighbors who cared for us and who supported us. And so on the day or the night that my wife gave birth, we were able to bring our son to a neighbor's house and they took care of him for two nights and two days until we got back from the hospital. And here's the thing when you're older, especially maybe when you're in 30s or older, and it depends on your personality as well, making friends when you're older tends to be a little bit more difficult. Um, but the thing is, if you keep your eyes open, be open to relationships and be open to new experiences, I think that you will be able to find those new friends, whether at work or in your community, or now I mean Facebook is also a good place to meet new people. And speaking of this feeling of isolation and lack of support, this is something that happened to us and I wish I handled it differently. So we moved to the US in August of 2015. So that's when my wife and I and our then only one son arrived here. And then just Two weeks later, I had to leave for one week for a trip to Germany, and that's for my work. She didn't have a driver's license yet. We didn't know very many people in, in our community yet, and so it was very tough on her. So thankfully, the wife of my boss, who is also a friend of mine now, uh, well, former boss, 
right? She was able to support her some and took her to some of the places that she needed to go during that week that I was away. So if you have a coworker and their family who's willing to support you, that would be a big plus. So here's the tip in making some friends. Find a church if you're a Christian and, you know, meet people and connect with them and hopefully the relationships will go deeper right in our case some of our um our best friends sort of we met in our community uh, we my son and i were just walking along in our apartment community and then there was a filipino family who just moved into the area and they heard my son call me tatay which is filipino for dad and they said oh are you filipinos and then so one thing led to another we met and then this was uh atefat kuyadot and their two kids and so eventually uh for the next for years or so, we became good friends and supported each other, and that made a big difference in our adjustment. Number three, language and cultural barriers. So language, um, even if you speak English, American English is varied depending on where you are. So there's no such thing as one type of American English. You know, sometimes people uh, expect English, American English to sound like the movies but i guess even in the movies there are different accents for for american english the accent for american english in new york is different from american english in california or american english in the south we are in tennessee and a lot of people have a southern accent here and so you need to learn to understand different accents like I'm a Filipino, and sometimes, depending on where you are from in the Philippines, there would be different accents as well for Filipinos, right? Um, in, in our case, I often joke that my son is trying to learn and practice his hybrid Filipino-Southern English accent, you know? I don't know what that is going to sound like. Um, the other thing is to also learn about cultural expectations. Um, American society tends to be individualistic and they have a high premium for individual rights and privacy. Um, but of course, a lot also put a premium on family relationships. So it's not like a one size fits all kind of thing. So it also depends on where you are and it, it depends on the, the people that you meet with. Uh, secondly, the holidays that are observed here are different. Like, even in the, the work culture in the Philippines, we have what we call a 13th month pay where you get an extra month's pay at the end of the year, like kind of a 13 months, right? That's a big bonus. And I wish I had that here in the U.S., but nope, there's no such thing as a 13th month pay bonus in the U.S. And if you're a big sports fan, like in the Philippines, I didn't really care for basketball or NBA, which is a big thing over there. But here, I started learning about American football. So, I mean, I've the first few years, I didn't understand what it was. But now, like uh, six years since we arrived here, I am I can say that I'm a fan of American football. Four, unlearning and relearning so many things. That's the thing about moving to a different country. It's like starting all over again. There's so many basic things that you need to learn relearn like putting gas in your car just by yourself i mean i've actually created a tutorial for how to put gas by yourself um here in the u.s uh, if you want that i'll put a link in the description below i mean i just looked stupid in the first time that i tried to put gas in my car i didn't know how to do it so i had to google it or do a quick youtube search to to understand how it's done um secondly you will also need to learn about the weather i come from a country where there's no winter so that's one thing you will need to buy new clothes and learn to rely on weather forecast and things like that you will also need to navigate different government processes and it's almost like what ever processes you know and understand from your previous life where you know previous country you will need to um, in a sense forget a little bit about that and learn new things and new processes in the usa um, number five 
there will be financial challenges, including employment opportunities. And what do I mean by that? Uh, people tend to see the U.S. as kind of, you know, American dream. You can earn dollars, you can earn a lot of money. But you know what? That's not guaranteed. Um, I came here as a religious worker. I had an R1 visa at first. So my wife had an R2 visa, a dependent of an R1 visa holder. And the problem is she cannot work at all. So that's a big challenge for us financially. And so not just financially, actually, that's also a challenge because she was a career woman when we moved you know, when we used to be in the Philippines. And so that's a big adjustment for her. And well, for us too, because we are a single income household with ki with a kid then. And um, depending on your background, employment opportunities may also be limited. And what do I mean by that? Even if you have some education and experience outside the U.S., it may be valued differently. Well, I mean, I know some doctors who come from the Philippines, but they cannot practice their profession here in the U.S., which means that they needed to, you know, do something else or learn some other skills. Like some doctors even took nursing, um, nursing classes here just so they can practice nursing. Um, you will need to look into certifications and licenses that you will need to get for specific jobs. But the thing is, there are also some opportunities for freelancing, for work here and there. It may not be as prestigious as what you used to have in your home country. And in and speaking of financial challenges, you will also need to build your credit. And that's one challenge is that it's not easy to to get a bank account, a credit card account. And so it takes time. To, to build up your credit history. I'll be creating a, another video series on financial things that you need to prepare for and plan for as you move and adjust to the USA. It takes a bit of time to save some money and you also need to be aware it's so easy to fall into the trap of credit card debt when you come here to the US. So don't dig yourself a hole and be careful for how you manage your finances while you're here in the USA. So we moved to the US in 2015. So it was initially just me, my wife, and one son, our son Malcolm. Now we've grown to a family of five. We've added two more sons. So there's been a lot of challenges for sure, but we've also grown together as a family. Since then, we've become permanent residents. And right now, as I'm recording this video in early 2022, we're preparing to buy our home soon. So I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel.